afternoon, everyone, and welcome. I'm Neil Whitaker, and on behalf of Dyson, it's a pleasure to welcome you all this afternoon to our briefing on creating healthier homes. Now, having been an interior design magazine editor myself for more than a decade, and having judged my way through, I think it's 11 years and 15 seasons of the block, um, I feel I have a fairly deep understanding of Australian homes and their needs and requirements. We actually spend 90% of our lives indoors, whether that's at home or in the office, we spend 90% of our lives indoors, even as Australians. And of course, in this COVID normal world that we all live in now, that means that more and more of us are spending time or more time than we've ever spent before at home. So therefore it's never been as vital as it is now to have a clean and healthy home. So this afternoon, we are going to be sharing new innovations in Dyson floor care technology and sharing some insights that will help all of us choose the right product for our home and our lifestyle. And joining me to do that and share those insights with you is Dyson product expert, George Barrianis. Thank you so Over much. Over to you, George. <laughs> Thank you for that warm welcome, Neil, and hello to everyone. I see some familiar faces, of course, in the room, uh, but I'm very excited to be here to help unveil Dyson's latest floor care technology because I've been working across that category at Dyson over the last five years. Um, and with that said, it's important to remember Dyson's first invention was a cyclonic vacuum cleaner. And that was the DCO one back in 1993. Um, and we've continued to pioneer the floor care category year after year, taking them from bagged vacuum cleaners to bagless vacuum cleaners, corded to cord free, and now cord free vacuum cleaners that have more than enough power and added intelligence to replace that big, heavy, bulky corded vacuum cleaner. So with that said, before we unveil the latest and greatest technology from Dyson, um, I would love to share with you a snapshot look over how, how Dyson has continued to pioneer the floor care category over the decades. Um, because as our founder, James Dyson says, I think things should just work properly and it's our engineer's job to make that happen. So with that said, um, please take a look at this overview on how we've continued to revolutionize the floor care category again and again. I think it's really interesting because you can't really see it, but it's a very powerful thing. We can use it to do things with unimaginable strength. The cyclones on my vacuum cleaner took over 5,000 prototypes. We spent 17 years developing, prototyping, and testing to create our fastest ever digital motor. What's wrong with things and literally go back to the drawing board. If you design a system with multiple small codes, we can make the system that is even more efficient. A heavy user of the machine picked up more than 700 bins of dust. Spot. We made it tougher. I want them to last much tougher. standing still at Dyson, we're always coming up with new ways to solve problems of the, or solve the problems um, for our owners. And with that said, um, it's really about um, making sure that we continue to pioneer this category to come up with technology that's going to help our owners create those cleaner, healthier home environments. So again, um, what's really exciting is that we have almost this intrinsic desire to want to understand how people are cleaning their homes, what they're leaving behind to fester. And what's really exciting is by launching our cord free technology, we have further again reinvented the way Australians are cleaning their homes. 
So with that said, um, we made reference to our Dyson DC01 vacuum cleaner. This was the world's first cyclonic bagless vacuum cleaner with no loss of suction. And over the years, as we continue to develop, we added better technology year after year, continuing to drive that shift to cord-free vacuum cleaners. And as a snapshot really is how we've positioned vacuum cleaners and their primary role over the years, from 2010 to 2018, you know, we all have had experience with a big, heavy, bulky corded vacuum cleaner. It sits in the cupboard um, throughout the week, and that was primarily positioned as the solution to provide a whole home deep clean, where stick vacuum cleaners um, were positioned as that quick everyday cleaning solution for those spot messes that we have throughout the home. And as we moved throughout the years in 2018, by James investing into our digital motor technology, he unlocked the power and performance of a big, heavy corded vacuum cleaner and was able to condense that down into a cord-free format. And that was our Dyson Cyclone V10, which allowed a cord-free vacuum cleaner for the first time to have the same power and performance as a big corded vacuum cleaner to where we can position it as that whole home deep cleaning solution for our owners. However, we're in 2021, and today's really all about the future of floor care at Dyson. But before we unveil that, it's important again to put a bit more context behind really our passion and almost obsession to want to understand how people are cleaning their homes so we can make our technology better each year, every time, to help our owners clean quicker, spend more time doing what they love doing, um, but making sure that our technology is efficient enough to be able to effectively remove dirt and allergens from the home. You know, we spend a lot of time almost mopping um, to try and get that barefoot clean and kind of cleaning everywhere throughout the home. But a lot of the time we tend to in, uh, miss a lot of the invisible dust that's naked to the human eye. Um, so it, we're passionate about knowing what our owners are leaving behind and what's festering inside their homes, um, which leads me perfectly into inviting Neil up to share some insights into some of the research and studies that we do here at Dyson. Thank you. Yeah, that passion and commitment to creating a healthier home led Dyson to commission a dust study of almost 11,000 respondents globally across 10 countries, including Australia. Now that revealed that three in five of us are now cleaning our homes more regularly than we did pre-pandemic, pre-COVID. And one third of those respondents stated very clearly that they are cleaning their homes more regularly because they want their homes to be healthier places. However, 60% of Australians did not understand or did not realise the correlation between house dust and viruses and did not understand that dust mites can actually cause viruses to spread. Four in five Aussies, and I used to count myself as one of them, four in five Aussies do not regularly vacuum their mattresses. And if you're looking at these little critters that have been popping up on the screen behind me, it kind of freaks me out when I realise that more than a million dust mites, am I correct, George, more than a million can live in the average mattress. In fact, I believe a square foot. Yeah. It literally is more than a million dust mites sitting in just a square meter of upholstery, whether that's in our lounges or whether that's in the mattresses that we rest on um, every single evening. So it's Which is a sobering thought. <laughs> Definitely. And a slightly um, scary thought too. <laughs> and, and please share with, share with everyone that other statistic. I will do. So what you're actually seeing here on the screen, of course, is some footage from Dyson's in-house microbiology lab. And we really are one of the only companies to ensure that we invest above the line to make sure that we put the research behind and understanding the problem of indoor dirt and pollution and allergens and how our machines can actually effectively remove them. So with that said, some of the images that you're seeing here within our microbiology lab, our, mi our scientists and microbiologists actually cultivate a dust mite farm. Um, and this dust mite farm actually allows them to monitor the behaviors and really how these nasty allergens and dust mites are embedding themselves into our furnishings. And the problem is, um, you know, as humans, we actually shed about 28 grams of skin every week. Um, and to put that into context, it's actually roughly about a packet of chips. Um, and this becomes the natural food source for these 
gorgeous looking creatures that embed themselves into our furnishings and then naturally they continue to reproduce create more droppings and in turn creating more allergens so when we're waking up in the morning and potentially having you know an itchy nose and itchy throat because we're triggered by a lot of these allergens that these dust mites produce and only by investing and almost obsessively investing in the research and development we are able to understand how these pollutants embed themselves throughout our home where they sit and fester but also use that research to create larger awareness about the correlation and the impact that it can have to our health but more importantly design our machines to effectively remove these to again create those cleaner healthier home environments for dyson owners which really sits at the heart of why um, we are passionate about solving the problems that others tend to ignore so uh, again neil mentioned it um, but here are some of the statistics that some of the statistics that have revealed themselves post i guess the COVID new normal we know that 89 percent of shoppers are actually making an informed decision to purchase products but with health being the main focus we want to make sure that the people we live with and ourselves are living the healthiest life we can by removing as much of these allergens as possible and of course those search terms increase nearly over a hundred percent and specifically the word deep clean you know we're spending more time indoors like neil says we're passionate about you know wanting to detail our whole homes and remove as much as possible so our latest technologies are really all about providing solutions to the real world problems amidst this new normal and with that said um, when any product launches to the market james dyson actually sets his engineers a brief and this time around he really wanted to challenge them to create um, technology that's going to advance um, i guess the form and function of what Dyson machines can deliver for our owners. And that engineering brief consisted of what you're seeing on screen. He challenged them to come up with a way to be able to reveal hidden dust that's naked to the eye, almost make the invisible visible, and then create a machine that was actually um, taking the intelligence to the next level, ensuring that it actually increases its suction power reactively on just based on how much dirt is on the floor. And then in addition to that, how do we actually prove that the machine has completed a deep clean? Is it when the bin's completely full and you see the work, or is it when you visibly can't see the dirt on the floor? Um, and last but not least, again, taking on our owner's feedback. We know that tangled hair around brush bars and maintaining them can be um, quite a bit of a frustration. So that was really the last piece of the brief um, that he set to our engineers. So with that said, the new technologies we're going to share with you today um, are going to solve those problems through three key new pieces of technology. So introducing the Dyson V15 Detect. It's very exciting because this is Dyson's most intelligent but the most powerful cord-free vacuum period. Um, and we're very proud to be unveiling this here in Australia. So with that said, um, I'm going to play you a little video that's actually going to bring these new key technologies to life for you. So check it out in action. Dyson's latest vacuum is the only one to use a laser. It's precisely angled to reveal invisible dust. The slim fluffy cleaner heads anti-static carbon fiber filaments pick up those microscopic particles. Suction is increased when needed thanks to this special sensor which counts each size and gives you scientific proof. It also comes with Dyson's pioneering technology, a high torque cleaner head that automatically adjusts across different floors and dust amounts. 14 redesigned side loads to maintain no loss of suction. The power of this hyperdimming motor and five stage filtration capturing 99.99% of dust. For the most powerful deep clean, I love seeing a couple of everyone's eyes kind of opened up a little bit when we saw that laser reveal, which was brilliant. That's exactly how we reacted when we saw this technology. Um, so to help unpack this a little bit further, I'm going to hand you over to our engineer, Josh, who's going to tell you a little bit more about how incredible this innovative technology is and more so how it's going to benefit our owners. I'm Josh, one of the engineers that's worked on our latest vacuum technology. I can confidently tell you it's completely changed the way that I clean my own home. 
I used to find myself having to routinely and methodically go about cleaning my house from top to bottom, often missing areas, but also cleaning areas that didn't need to be cleaned. We now have three new technologies, a laser, a piezo sensor, and our LCD screen that have completely changed this. The laser shows me hidden dust, so I know exactly where I need to clean. The piezo senses the presence of dust and can increase the suction power of the machine, making cleaning more efficient. The LCD screen lets me know when the room is clean. It categorizes and sizes particles, so I know when the job is done. So I'm no longer cleaning every room every week. I'm cleaning when I need to, where I need to, and I have proof of a deep clean. I think what we love about this technology is now we're going to be spending less time cleaning because we have a really intelligent vacuum cleaner that's going to reveal what we're actually missing so we know precisely where to clean. So I'd just like to mention that we're going to have an opportunity to move through three different stations throughout this presentation. So we're actually going to bring this to life for you in a really exciting way as we move throughout the session. But in terms of breaking this key technology down, this of course is our slim laser fluffy cleaner head. What you might notice is that we're refer to it, referring to it as being slim. That's because we've taken the existing properties of our fluffy cleaner head, which is incredible at removing large debris and fine dust simultaneously from hard floors, but it has patented carbon fiber bristles, which means that it's conductive. It removes some of that static charge from the floor, picking up more dust than ever, but it's actually a much slimmer profile, which means that we maintain the width that we're cleaning the floor, but it's much more narrower so we can get under those lower clearance furnishings that we have in our home, make it easier to clean those awkward spaces. I just like the sound of laser fluffy. <laughs> it's amazing, <laughs> right? We like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's very much, you know, a, a fascinating engineering term that we've come up with that one. But with that said, the laser, by combining that with the laser technology, this is now going <clears> to reveal a lot of that hidden dust and debris that is often lurking and festering throughout our home. So we'll unpack that a little bit further as we move through our technology zones. But the second key piece of technology is really all around acoustic dust sensing. What does that mean for us? We take our existing intelligence, add an extra layer to that with a brand new piezo sensor. Now that sensor is actually ensuring that it is monitoring how much dirt and debris is entering through the vacuum cleaner and it monitors that information and sends a message back to the motor 15,000 times a second to make sure that it instantly reacts, raises its suction power, so you can deep clean your floors quicker than ever before with the optimized power and performance. And we've combined that with the new LCD screen. The way we love to refer to this at Dyson, it's almost the new clear bin moment. And you've been mentioning it throughout, you know, we spoke about it earlier, how you found it super thrilling oh. to be able to see what you're capturing. Well, it's, it's, yes, I mean, it, it's, it's thrilling on many levels, but it's the, con well, the concept of anything being able to happen 15,000 times a second is extraordinary. But what I find particularly interesting about this is this concept of the power of the vacuum being dictated by the noise of the dust particles, the actual sound of the dust. It doesn't see it in the dust, it, it actually hears it, hears it and listens it's, to it, which that, is great. That's extraordinary. Absolutely, and what we're really excited about is this LCD screen is gonna maintain what our owners love, telling you the remaining runtime down to the second, so you can really plan out your clean. However, you now have the added layer of scientific proof, right? This is the new clear bin moment. Now we could always see what we're capturing in the bin, but we can actually measure just how much we're removing from our homes. And what I love about this is when you vacuum, once those bar graphs stop growing, it means the area that you've cleaned has been removed of all dirt and allergens and you can move on throughout your home. Um, so I'm gonna hand you over to our engineer, Joe, who is going to give you a bit of a visual representation on how this technology works. This model is a visual representation of the dust detecting system. It's scaled up by around 12 times you can see the different sized particles enter the machine and hit our inlet duct. The piezo sensor listens to the vibrations and electrical signals are sent to our intelligent processor. The dust and debris is captured in a six stage separation system. The dust detect algorithm counts and categorizes the particles into size bins. This happens at 15,000 times per second. The buckets below represent the bars on the LCD screen which shows the accumulation of particles for the clean. Larger than 10 microns is things like allergens and pollen. 
Above 60 microns is the size of microscopic dust. Above 180 microns is the size of dust mites. Larger than 500 is as big as sugar or fleas. As you might see, the occasional fine particle might group together and appear larger than it is. You could also sell that machine to the lottery people that could figure out a new way to pick the numbers each week. You know, <laughs> potentially, but we're going to focus on cleaning those healthier homes for now, Alex. But with that said, um, it's important to know that, you know, when we've added these new innovations, but V15, you know, we're making that claim to say that it's the most powerful cord-free vacuum cleaner, and we can only achieve that through Dyson's Hyperdimium motor. You know, we've been developing this motor for over 17 years. We were the first to put it in a vacuum cleaner, and now we're the first to create one so powerful that this delivers up to 230 air watts of suction power which is more than our most powerful of the v11 so yeah i'm getting my words mixed up but v11 now has been debunked as the most powerful since v15 is launched and that's all due to our dyson digital motor so it's it's fantastic to be able to reveal the dirt react to the amount of dirt be able to prove how much dirt's there but what's really important in this new COVID normal world is ensuring that anything we're capturing inside the machine stays inside it and only cleaner air is being expelled from the vacuum cleaner. Now that might sound like, you know, an expectation we, you know, you'd expect any vacuum cleaner to do, but it's actually a hard thing to achieve, right? And we proud, I pride ourselves at Dyson about achieving whole machine filtrations whole machine filtration over six different layers. So it ensures that all those nasty allergens and dirt that we're removing from our home is staying contained and only clean air is being expelled from the machine. It captures things down to 99.99% of dust particles down to 0.3 microns, which is truly incredible. And this felt particularly relevant, didn't it, yesterday when we were discussing it, because it was World Asthma Day. Correct, and you know, in Australia, nearly one in nine Australians actually suffer from asthma and allergies. So this is something that's extremely important for those as well. So which leads me into our third key piece of technology. It's really all around the frustration of hair tangling around our brush bars, which means there's more maintenance to do, um, which we know we want to spend less time vacuuming and less time maintaining. So Dyson's most powerful cleaner head, the high torque drive, has had an improvement. We now have 56 polycarbonate teeth that actually groom the brush bar each time it makes a revolution to ensure that as our owners are driving throughout their home, regardless of what debris they're picking up, it is detangling this brush bar, eliminating the maintenance and, and ensuring that you're getting the optimal pickup performance. And we've combined that perfectly with kind of one of our most beloved tools, um, which is the mini motorized tool. This was um, really the first of its kind to be able to deep clean upholstered surfaces um, and it allowed us to remove pet hair. However, pet hair would often wrap around that um, mini motorized tool. So the hair screw tool is an improvement on that. It maintains the great pickup performance, removing of allergens, but now with a brand new conical brush bar, that means that hair or long hair and pet hair is now spiraling completely off the brush bar and entering into the bin. So our owners are getting, um, uh, having to do a lot less maintenance when we're cleaning after up our beloved pets and the people that we live with in our home with long hair. So, um, with that said, I'm going to pass you over to our engineer, Aaron, who's just going to show you this demonstrate, uh, well, I guess show you some of this technology um, in action. Did you know that you could lose up to 100 strands of hair a day? Dyson's anti tangle technology means that it picks up both long hairs and pet hairs fast. It comes in the box of our new cordless vacuums, the Dyson V15 Detect and Dyson V12 Detect Slim. You can see it doesn't look like a conventional brush bar. It's conical, so your hair and pet hair cannot wrap and tangle. Instead, hair migrates towards the tip of the brush bar and is sucked into the bin. It has its own motor, which means you can drive out dirt trapped deep within upholstery, stairs, mattresses, and other dirty spots around the house easily. We had to find a solution for the cleaner head too. The cleaner head now has 56 polycarbonate teeth. You can see that it looks like a comb. These small teeth prevent tangling around the bristles when you are cleaning. It automatically clears hair from the brush bar, so you don't have to. Did you know that hair tangling in the brush bar affects pickup efficiency? A lot of shoppers do not realize the need for the brush bar to be as effective as the rest of the vacuum. The result, Dyson's V15 Detect High Top Cleaner Head that prevents tangling. 
this incredible piece of technology that we're excited to be launching. So with that said, pairing our existing core technology, which is our no loss of suction, which really is achieved through our patented cyclonic technology. We then couple that with a Dyson Hyperdimium motor, which delivers that powerful suction power, spinning it over 120,000 rotations per minute, um, which is almost um, heat a lot, a lot faster than a conventional motor. And then of course, whole machine filtration to make sure we're capturing all those particles and Dyson's patented carbon fiber filaments that live across all of our cleaner heads to ensure we're removing more fine dust than ever before. So if we pair that with our new innovation, laser dust detection, <coughs> acoustic dust sensing, and anti-tangle technology, we're really in a unique position to prove the difference and reassure our owners that they're getting the best clean in their home possible and can actually prove that then their home has been removed of allergens and dirt. So uh, in terms of the feature stack that you can see here, we've showed you where some of this technology actually lives in the product. But what I'd love to call out is that Dyson V15 uses our most advanced battery technology. It means our owners will get up to 60 minutes of runtime. And the caveat there is that it's 60 minutes of fade-free runtime. And what that means at Dyson is you'll find that when you pull the trigger on a Dyson machine, you're gonna get 100% of the power from the first second uh, for the, from the beginning of the battery right up until the last second. You'll never hear it sort of starting off screaming and end up whispering, which means our owners are gonna get a continuous, consistent pickup performance throughout their whole home, which is super important in this new normal. So with that said, we're actually launching two variants of our Dyson V15 Detect here in Australia. The first is gonna be widely available across all our retailer channels, and this is the V15 Detect Total Clean. This uses all the core technology that we just shared with you. However, there will be an exclusive direct version called the Dyson V15 Detect Absolute Extra. There are two main differences in this product. The first is it has a new filter. The green filter on our Absolute Extra model actually has, it uses HEPA media. So this allows us to achieve a more advanced filtration. So we're capturing things as small as diesel soot. And this is Dyson's first cord-free vacuum cleaner with whole machine HEPA filtration. The second additional benefit of purchasing direct is that this machine will come with a freestanding docking station in the, in the box to give our owners the option on how they want to store their product throughout their home. So that really concludes the latest and greatest innovation in terms of our cord-free whole home deep cleaning solutions. But there's really an exciting new product that we're also launching today, which is all about transforming the way we conventionally clean our hard floors um, in you know, this new format. And I'm not gonna do it justice by explaining it, so I'm gonna just show you it in action. Check this out. facial expressions again and it was almost this kind of new jaw drop moment and that's what we love here at Dyson. So with that said we're very proud to unveil alongside V15 the Dyson OmniGlide. It's the slimmest most maneuverable vacuum, maneuverable vacuum that Dyson has ever launched um, and what makes it extremely unique was what you saw in that film which is our unique one-of-a-kind omnidirectional soft roller clean head. Um, so this actually has those fantastic properties to vacuum up large debris and fine dust, but now it does it in a forward pass and a backward pass. So you're able to clean your floors a lot quicker um, because of that forwards and backward pass. Now with that said, it uses Dyson's first complete inline design, which means that we're actually able to lie the machine completely flat, but also have it in one of our most lightweight format 
and just under 1.9 kilograms, which is incredible. It also includes um, one of the first machines to incorporate Dyson's on and off power button. Um, and this machine uh, is specifically engineered uh, for those occasional cleaning. It sits in its complete own category in multi-directional cleaning. This, if you picture the Dyson OmniGlide, imagine this sitting in that little nook inside your kitchen um, that you're gonna zip out every single day to quickly clean after those um, kitchen spills and taking it to the washroom and vacuuming the tiles. This is going to be a perfect companion to an existing Dyson corded machine or a whole home deep cleaning um, Dyson cord free machine. This is the one that's going to give you up to 20 minutes of runtime to quickly zip around your hard floors. But it, we're so excited for you to get hands on with this product as well because um, we fundamentally believe this is going to, again, revolutionize really high frequency hard floor cleaning needs for our owners in their homes. And this sits at your $599 price point. So with that said, I guess to wrap up before we move on through our next, tip, uh, through our next zones in the presentation, um, as a summary, here are some of the three key technologies we're launching on the 27th of May here in Australia. The first, of course, is the Dyson V15 Detect. This is the hero of our product because it is the most powerful and it's engineered for those whole home deep cleans. We then have the Dyson V12 Detect Slim. This machine, takes some of the three key new technologies, so laser dust detection, acoustic dust sensing, and our anti-tangle properties, um, and we've shrunk it down into a more compact format. And we're very excited to bring this machine to Australia um, because it's the perfect solution, we believe, for those who want a more compact machine but don't want to compromise on the power and performance and intelligence. So with that said, it also encompasses a new push to start button control. Um, and this is what we're offering as part of our cord free new technologies. And then we have Dyson OmniGlide for all the reasons I mentioned before. It sits in its own complete category because it's the world's first vacuum cleaner with an omnidirectional cleaner head to really make it seamless when cleaning your hard floors. Amazing. And this, all this technology is launching on the 27th of May here in Australia. Thank you, George. Yeah. Any questions for George before we move into the demonstration space? Cool. So this new button, does that mean you don't have to hold the uh, the trigger Correct. To, to continue vacuuming? So you can, you can turn it on and it's on. Correct, yeah. And that lives inside V12 and OmniGlide. But I'd like to um, actually probably add a little bit of extra information on the back of that because the reason why V15 has maintained its trigger because we know this product gives you the most runtime and the most powerful clean. And we know that that is... In super important to preserve that runtime. We want to make sure you're using the power exactly where you need it. Whereas these machines have more of a role of occasional cleaning where it'll be complemented with a, uh, an existing product where V12 will give you more than enough runtime to quickly swap between hands in a smaller home where V15 is the solution for all homes. Sure, but all three have the removable battery. They all do, yeah, which absolutely. Is, which was introduced with the V12. And, yeah, so and, we, and is it a second generation battery now with even more power? Actually, we're using um, the same battery technology inside our <laughs> V11 vacuum cleaners. Um, and the great thing is about that is they're actually all interchangeable with each other. So if an owner does have an existing V11, they can clip that battery into their Dyson V15 vacuum cleaner um, and get up to 120 minutes runtime if they wanted to. Yeah. Awesome. Any other questions? George, we should probably reference to the safety of the laser? Yeah, great shout. Um, so we've often been asked questions, you know, is the laser um, safe to be able to drive around the floor if we potentially lift the cleaner head up and it becomes in line with our eyesight or our beloved pets um, who might come in contact with the cleaner head? Or kids. Um, we, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and we want to reassure owners that this is a class one laser, so it's completely eye safe. Um, and we also provide the option, which we'll show you in the next room, that you can turn the laser on and off as well. Um, but once you use the laser, you're never going to want to turn it off. I can tell you that much. And um, why was it a, a um, green laser instead of a red laser or some other that's color? That's a great question. You know what? I'd love to take you over to the tech zone because I'm going to answer half of these for you when we go in there. Sure, sure. And I know you're going to have that camera on me as well. So we're going <laughs> to nail it in front of with the lasers too. Um, 
So yeah, let's follow Neil through. Um, yeah, to and head space. across to the demonstration space. Yes. George, explain to us about the RDD confidential. That's, yeah, I like that's that perfect. Story. So again, right, we're very happy to welcome you into this on the almost technology zone. Um, but we thought this was a really nice addition to add because this is something that our engineers have, our engineers have a notebook and it's their RDD notebook and we basically took the front cover cover of that and put it here in this event because. What's quite interesting, I have no doubt a lot of this technology would have scrib been scribbled down and kind of formulas being created in sketches many years um, before its development. So it's really exciting to know that if you have one of these yellow notebooks, you have very high classification at Dyson. Um, so it's, uh, we're very excited to invite you almost into our RDD space because um, all of this um, wouldn't be possible without our engineers at Dyson. And, and does it stand for Research and Design Dyson or what's it? Research, the... Design and Development. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, cool. All right, I think we might just kick off and we'll wait for anyone to come on through. But uh, the, re the actual demonstration zone that we have here is really all about making the invisible visible. This is what's gonna highlight in a practical setting just how effective our laser is and how it's gonna change, again, the way owners are cleaning their homes. So with that said, um, I'm actually gonna grab, there you go, <laughs> got my torch. Um, thank you. So with that said, we have our new Slim Fluffy Clean Head, you can see it here. When we activate the trigger, the Dyson laser starts to project from the product. But what I'd like to share with you here is it's not a matter of literally our engineers just putting a laser on the clean head and, you know, sending it off to production. They almost took a forensic approach to understand you know, what is the exact height in millimetre to raise this laser off the floor? And what is the exact angle to allow this cleaner head to be, able, to be able to illuminate the dust sitting on top of the surface rather than illuminating the floor and the debris at the same time? Um, so with that said, you know, this is a really great demonstration to show you how a seemingly clean floor um, is probably representative of our, a, lot of our, a lot of our homes where a lot of that dust and dirt can be lurking. So the laser is quite practical to help reveal the hidden dust on our floors. And the soft roller cleaner head is incredible at removing fine dust and also large debris from hard floors. So it's really helping deliver that deep clean. But then again, see, often when we make a uh, swipe of a clean, we tend to leave a little bit of an area and we've assumed because we've cleaned that spot that it's done. Now with the laser, I can completely track to see exactly where I need to clean and spend less time almost taking a methodical approach of you know, making sure I'm cleaning every square meter of floor. The laser's gonna help my eyes see um, exactly what's there. So by positioning the laser 7.3 millimeters off the ground and angling it at 1.5 degrees, it allows it to reveal the top of the dust that's sitting on the surface. But why our engineers chose a green color was because this provides the greatest contrast um, and it's very easy for um, the human eye to be able to pick up those light reflections. So green is actually something the human eye picks up and is a lot more sensitive to. And we found that was the perfect color to make sure our eyes can see as much of that invisible dust, which we know causes um, those um, health impacts. We like to think of it also as, as like the laser reveals almost the fog of the floor and then you can really just see what's there. And now I have another piece of this demonstration because I do have the LED light here. And the reason why it's important for me to showcase this to you, because when we put an LED light on the floor, like many other products out there, they claim to um, state they illuminate the floor so you can see where you need to clean. But the problem is an LED light lights the floor and the debris on the surface as well. So it's still very difficult to know what you're leaving behind. So again, does this floor look clean to everyone? Mm. Yeah? This is why everyone needs a Dyson B15 detect in their home. Look at that, right? These are those microscopic allergens, those particles, you know, when we have those airborne pollutants that tend to settle on our floor, these are the things that, you know, our families are walking across, our pets are walking across. And, you know, for me, there's nothing worse than doing the vacuuming and then kind of walking around barefoot and you almost feel a bit of that grit and you're like, like have I not done a good job? Um, so the laser really helps achieve that. Um, and now I know if you, you had the chance to get one. And oh, it's extraordinary. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get to try this at home earlier this week and I have white floorboards in my house. And um, I wanted to test the laser out. <laughs> my partner, David, who you know, 
Francesca, um, had just vacuumed. He said, why on earth are you doing that now? I've just cleaned. And you know, this is not sort of judging David's ability to clean the house, but he had just cleaned using our old Dyson. And I sort of got this and I put the laser and I said, David, I said, come here. And on our wife, just what you've, I mean, he, he had put the old vacuum all over the floor, but it's amazing how much gets left behind and how much this picks up. Because when I started using this, we could see little glittering jewels of dust in that laser beam all over the floor. It was, it was amazing. You know, and I know for me, just to share a funny little personal anecdote, when I took this home and I ran it across the floor, my dad almost said, well, this is gonna debunk the three second rule right away. You know, now that you can see everything on the floor, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's really gonna go a long way to making sure we're effectively cleaning every piece of our floor and removing those harmful allergens. And those arrows are being projected by the um, laser or that secret arrows that's on the floor there? those arrows were essentially a stencil that we put on the ground and put the debris over the top. Okay. So it was just really to create an awesome visual effect on how um, the laser represents that. Um, but great shout, Alex, we're always sending information to our engineers. Um, so with that said, you know, this really, we encourage you to come and have a go at this and capture some content a bit later on as we move through, but it's probably the perfect segue to move on to our next technolo yeah, technology. So we've got some prototypes over here. Amazing, so if you feel free to come on around. Um, What's really incredible at Dyson and actually inspires us as Dyson employees on a daily is that more than half of our workforce are engineers and scientists. So, you know, putting it back to a little bit of history, before James launched that first vacuum cleaner, he failed over 5,000 times, right? Half and as many as Thomas Edison. Half as many as Thomas Edison. However, what's incredible is to take from that message is there's really no reward without risk. And James is never gonna put something out there in the market without completely ensuring that it's gonna do exactly what it says it's gonna do for our owners in the home. So we really wanted to almost bring a little bit of our, of our engineering lab for you to experience here, but I'm not gonna do as good a job as the engineer explaining how they evolved through this. So we have our awesome engineer, Henry, who actually worked on the prototyping phases to help bring to us this latest and greatest clean ahead technology. When we first started developing laser dust illumination, we first wanted to prove the technology works. And that meant ignoring the integration of the clean ahead and just focusing on a black box, in this case a white box. One where we could install the laser and put it on a floor surface and just see how can we make this work? How can we hide back the dust on the surface without showing the surface itself. So this rig was an adjustable rig. We could tune the parameters, the height of the laser and the angle, so that we could figure out the best parameters to bring forward. And once we've proven that that worked, it was time to put it onto the head. So this is a really important step. This allowed us to see how light behaves as we move it across different tiles, different floor surfaces, and to see whether that effect still works in practice. As you can see though, whilst this was a successful rig, it's quite bulky. These wings are about 50 millimeters in width. Moving forward, we looked at different techniques of controlling light. Up until this point, we've been using mirrors to reflect the light from a downward angle out horizontally. In this rig, we start to use the prism. So this small light guide brings the light in and reflects it horizontally so that it skims across the surface. This though was still too big. You can see this rig is still a good 20 millimeters wide, wider than we want it to be. Following this rig, we were able to integrate the technology into the slim, fluffy profile. By removing the light guide that we developed and simply using two small lenses, we were able to fit this within the profile of the slim, fluffy head. Up until this point though, all of the lenses that have been used were off-the-shelf lenses and we wanted something that was designed by Dyson. We designed our own optic, over 500 iterations of improvement, to a point that we were confident enough in our simulation that we could 3D print this lens for the first time and test it for real. And that's this lens just here. You can see it's very small. And that allowed us to reduce the thickness of the whole technology even more. Once we had confidence in this design, in our simulations and in our prototype, we were then able to injection mold our design. 
and that's this lens just here. So this is the first injection molded lens that Dyson developed. And as you can see, it's also very small. This was the first group that we developed that had an injection molded lens. Um, you can see it's not quite final, so we've still got these plastics, but the thickness is finally the thickness that we wanted. So that was a quick overview of the evolution of laser dust illumination through from its inception to production. Thank you. It's truly inspirational to just really understand that there's nothing off the shelf that's good enough for Dyson. Um, and I think that's the message to take from here is that we will never take something off the shelf if it's not going to be able to deliver what we want our machines to, to do at the end of the day. So feel free to come through here and capture some content later on. But what's really exciting is this helps bring to life I guess the genius of our engineers being able to reflect the laser diode through this to, again, um, make sure that we're able to reveal that hidden dust, you know, and this is, in fact, oh, it's so small I can't even grab it. Um, this is the laser that sits inside our slim fluffy cleaner head. This is our own injected molded one. So feel free to come and capture some content um, if you like, but it's incredible that this, um, from that initial conception, all the way through to the finished product, you know, this took over 500 iterations. So we're relentless about making sure that our machines do what they say they're going to do. So we'll invite you over to the next demonstration rig to, I guess, showcase um, the importance of that lens. So we saw it in its actual size there and how they continue to iterate it through. This is probably, yeah, definitely a good one to come close. But as you can see, that lens that I just held in my hand has now been scaled up by 100%. Um, so what this is just to demonstrate is obviously with those bends and curves inside this lens, it means that when the laser diode passes through the lens at a particular angle, it means that it reflect, refracts the light and it allows it to almost position it to a 90 degree angle. So what's happening here, I'm putting in some smoke to make it, um, to show you, I guess, to, to highlight the laser a bit better. But when it's sitting at zero degrees off the ground, it's just a complete blade of light. Then when we move it to be around 1.5 degrees, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the blade of light actually moves almost to a 90 degree angle. And that is what is represented here. It allows us to put a laser on one side of the cleaner head, but then the lens reflects that light. So the whole laser covers the whole 250 millimeter wide cleaner head meaning that you can really reveal anything that's in the path of the clean head. So it's just incredible really that they prototype and test and you know make sure that we had to create our own lens to just be able to refract that light through the product. So um, yes, this is really concluding about our, our laser technology. But again, like we said, to reinforce, this is a class one laser. This is not um, going to be harmful. It's safe on the eyes for our, uh, you know, um, family that potentially could be crawling on the floor, um, our pets, and also um, tend to, when we lift the cleaner head up, potentially um, wave it in eyesight, it's completely safe. I mean, you wouldn't look at it for it's a long time. You you shouldn't do that. Well, we wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, maybe it'll reveal some hidden dust. I'll have to try it later. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> no, but you're yeah. absolutely right. You know, yeah. it's, it's really just comes down to that almost that common sense. Mm. But if you are exposed to it, it's not going to cause any damage whatsoever. Mm. Um, awesome. Great. Any other questions about the lasers before we move on? Brilliant. Any so, shark attachments? Uh, you know, uh, lasers on with the uh, sharks oh. with freaking lasers. Yeah. No. One million yeah. lasers. <laughs> That's right. Um, okay. Yeah, let's come on through. Let's Sorry, my weird sense of humor. Sorry. It's good. You're always hitting me on my toes. That's, That's it. That's it. Um, <laughs> so with that said, um, you know, I know this one when Neil and I were chatting before. It's kind of. Um, ties back to really how passionate you were talking about how our vacuum reacts and this whole demonstration rig is about showcasing really James's ambition even from years ago so to put this into context this is an oscilloscope right and let's say that this is the piezo sensor in our vacuum cleaner and this is the microprocessor that measures those sound waves James Dyson actually um, wanted to invest in an 80,000 um, pound uh, technology rig and acoustic dust sensing so when he was developing his cyclones he needed something to be able to measure um, how efficient his cyclones were so every time he'd do rigs and tests and see how effective they were at separating he would use an acoustic sensor to actually listen to the sound vibrations and how many particles were actually um, being escaped from his cyclones so that allowed him to continue to refine them even further 
to make sure that they were so efficient to capture it down. But what basically he's done in this product is scaled this down, almost put like an 80,000 pound sensor into a consumer vacuum cleaner. And the main benefit for our owners, of course, is that they are now gonna have their floor cleaning be even more autonomous. It's not just reacting to the floor type, which we would consider intelligent already. It's almost advanced intelligence because now it's reacting based on the type of debris. So what we have here in our oscilloscope is, I'm actually gonna pass around, Neil, if you wanna help me. Um, so this the this sensor. is the actual two scale, the piezo sensor that's right, inside the machine. And sure. this sits in the inlet duct of the product. So again, as the dirt and debris flies through the vacuum cleaner or enters it, it creates a sound vibration acoustically. And then um, it sends that message and that wavelength back to the microprocessor, back through to the motor to make sure it reacts instantly to pick up, um, create more suction power the more dirt there is on the floor, which is incredible. And it does that 15,000 times a second. Yeah. So in this rig here in our oscilloscope, just for, I guess, demonstration purposes, this is obviously a much larger scale version of what we could produce. We reverse this speaker to make it actually listen to the sound vibrations and report it back to the microprocessor, okay? So let's imagine this is a whole bunch of, you know, sugar or debris that we've picked up. It hits in, it'll create a particular sound wave and that'll send it back to the motor to raise its um, suction power to deep clean as quick as possible. And then again, if, of course, if this was much heavier soil debris, if it pushes down a bit harder, it's gonna create a larger spike, which means that it's gonna send a different message to the motor saying, hey, I need you to ramp up your suction power right now. I'm trying to tackle a difficult task, but when I'm moving throughout the home, I want you to optimize, give me a bit more battery power and only give me more suction when I need it based on how soiled the floor is. Great, so it's amazing, you know, James, uses this technology from years ago, but he doesn't forget it, writes in his RDD sketchbook, and then he works out ways to be able to scale it down and almost put an 80,000 pound sensor into a cord-free vacuum cleaner to benefit our owners for reactive suction power. You would never have thought that a vacuum cleaner needed a way to hear something. Totally, you know, it's, we love that sure. whole catchphrase of, you know, it's, it's almost like it doesn't see it and mm. react, it actually it. hears it, um, which is incredible. Mm. And that's how calibrated our sensors are. So with that said, are there any other questions, I guess, about this particular demonstration rig or about the acoustic dust sensing? When will it be uh, accurate enough to detect a little COVID, vac COVID virus hitting it, you know? Uh, well, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that one yet, but let's no, no. ask the question to our engineers, sure, sure, we'll sure. see. Uh, but yeah, you yeah. always give me those pickly questions, Alex, I love it. Um, but when we do, you'll be here when we're launching, it, that's for sure. I will. <laughs> Great. So with that said, um, this demonstration rig is going to put that technology in a bit more of a practical sense, right? Um, so if we're talking about advanced intelligence, it's a combination of the sensor and the LCD screen, right? So we're actually using microprocessor to make the machine react to whatever it's exposed to, and then the LCD screen to prove that the area that you're cleaning in your home, you can know how much you've removed, but also stop cleaning that area once it's been completely cleaned. So this demonstration rig is going to, I guess, showcase to you how the machine intelligently adapts between different floor types. So on the LCD screen, it's important to note, we have an auto mode. That is engineered really for creating autonomous floor cleaning. We don't want people to we want to take the guesswork out completely, regardless of what surface you're on, regardless of what you're picking up, we want the machine to automatically adapt. But we have three different power modes that the users can switch between. Eco mode is going to give you the longest runtime in floor cleaning, but this mode is designed really for using handheld attachments, the passive tools for dusting, cleaning the architraves, or really detailing the home from a dusting perspective. And then auto mode, like we said, perfect for any type of floor cleaning and optimizing itself. And then we have boost mode, engineered for really those quick, intensive, deep cleans. You know, think about removing those allergens from our mattress, right? Or removing kind of sand from our car mats. You know, I know for me, that's one of the biggest frustrations when I go to the beach, the dogs jump in, there's a whole bunch of sand. You know, you kick a Dyson machine into boost mode and it's removing that really quickly. But what we also find, owners tend to, you know, we are always pioneering new 
technology, but it's our job to create a bit more awareness too for our owners, how to get the best out of their machines. And a lot of us have this conventional approach of, I need to have it in the highest suction mode to get the best clean. When actually that's not the case, right? It's just essentially wasting a lot more energy and making it a bit harder for you to vacuum your floors. So we thought, hey, let's create a machine that is not only gonna know what floor surface it's on and intelligently adapts. And that was introduced with V11. Our high torque cleaner head has a microprocessor on it. It detects resistance. So when it's on a hard floor, the brush bar doesn't spin as aggressively. Um, and then when it moves onto a carpet, it starts to dig a little bit deeper to help deep clean and remove those embedded allergens from carpet. But now with acoustic dust sensing, it makes it even more advanced. So not only are we adapting to the floor type, but we're adapting to the amount of debris. So what you'll see here on the graph, we've got this machine connected up, obviously to the screen here, but you'll notice the graph will spike as I come across different floor surfaces and different types of debris. And then um, the LCD screen is then going to report and count the size of those particles. Um, but what really is gonna be exciting for our owners is that when you see the particle graph stop growing, you know the area that you've done is clean. So I'm gonna activate the trigger. So what happened now? Clearly there's a bit of dust and debris here. Now the machine sounds a lot more louder because we do have this rig on the product. But as I, oh, and also because I have it in boost mode. Uh, okay, uh, so we've got the machine here, and this is how it would behave on a hard floor. And then when it reacts, to the dirty debris, you hear it raise its suction power, more suction power based on the fine dust that's on the floor, and then when I remove that dirty debris, the reactive power instantly drops down again to optimize and give me more runtime. Okay, and then when we move to a carpeted surface, you hear dynamic load sensing kick in, but then when I start to move over the debris, it raises itself instantly even quicker, which means that you're spending less time on one particular area just to almost be like, okay, is it deep clean? I don't know, we're so used to going over the same spot multiple times. Whereas this machine is gonna say, okay, George, you don't need to keep going on that floor. You've picked up everything, you can move on. Um, and that's what the LCD screen will do. So we'll keep it stable at the moment, but literally in just that demonstration, we picked up nearly 20 million microscopic particles, nearly as allergens and pollen, and that's what sits in that 10 microns graph. And then of course, all the way through, you know, 1 million of up to 60 microns, which is microscopic dust. So the point is, when you're vacuuming your floor, once this graph stops growing, you can move out throughout your home knowing that that area has been removed of all dirt allergens um, and dust and debris in your home. If you're ever lonely, just pick up the vacuum cleaner and you've got lots of friends. Totally. Uh, we actually um, had someone mention it's almost like a gamification, you know, it becomes a challenge. Yeah. Hey, can I beat my top score from next time, from the last cleaning session? Um, and I know a few of my friends will probably put their kids to work and say, can you beat your brother's high score? You know, <laughs> go around the house, which is great. Um, so we'll pop that one in, but the point is, we want to make it even more autonomous for our owners, taking a lot of that guesswork out. And by incorporating this technology, we're going to change the way they clean again and spend more time doing what we love. Are there any questions? Cool, amazing, great. Come on through, we've got one more thing for you to experience. Um, so we thought it was really important because we believe that this is going to be a game-changing clean ahead. You know, may I ask, like, is long hair a frustration when it tangles around a brush for us? Yeah, I saw that Bethel Nord's view before you were like, yep, uh, this is going to work in my house. This again is just showing the evolution of how our engineers came up with different prototypes to be able to solve this problem, right? Um, but with that said, if we turn around, I'm gonna have Aaron, who actually came up with the idea, prototype the machine, uh, prototype these all the way up until its final production unit, and he's gonna explain to you how they achieved that and the benefit of this um, clean head. Hi, my name is Aaron, and I'm a mechanical engineer at Dyson. I've worked in floor care for two and a half years, where I focused primarily on cleaning head development. When we initially started developing this product, we started with a big diameter brush bar. What this means was that longer hairs, like human hair, could wrap really easily around the brush bar. So this didn't solve the problem. So we decided that why not we could look and take inspiration from the ancient Egyptians. Here we have a brush bar that's shaped like an Archimedes screw which means that the hairs can move in a continuous fashion from the bottom to the top of the brush bar and get evacuated by an offset airway. 
there was still a problem of picking up debris. So we had to solve this problem. One of the options that we did was to create an Archimedes screw which had channels in between the brush bars to channel the debris from the base of the brush bar to the tip of the brush bar. We had to think about a way to angle the bristles on the brush bar. So we have created the anti-tangle screw where you can see that it has a, a conical brush bar shaped like an Archimedes screw which migrates hair from the base to the tip of the brush bar fast and is evacuated in an offset airway and straight into the bin. What makes this technology different from our competitors is we still use bristles, which means that it can drive the dirt track deep within upholstery, stairs, mattresses, and other dirty spots around your house. We hope that this saves you as much frustration as we get from seeing tangled brush bars. I know it definitely has in my house, so I really, really look forward to it doing the same thing for you all. Um, with this demonstration rig, it's really just to show you a prototype that Aaron created to really make test this conical brush bar um, by feeding through hair, basically through this complete rig for 24 hours a day, seven days a week in our research and development lab. And this is what really gave them the confidence to put it into our product to say, this is not gonna get tangled whatsoever. So Neil, I know this is, you know, what exciting part for us, favorite one. I have no hair, so you know. <laughs> I love this bit. We always like to almost put our machines, you know, to the pressure test um, and give them almost I unrealistic mean, situations to reassure our own. Move, move back so it goes taut. <laughs> and then we lay it on the floor. Imagine this is a super, super long hair. Five meters long. Right? Is that um, on, is that, that taut enough? Ah, oh, that's perfect. That um, but what I wanted to show you as well is you've seen this tool in a handheld application, but it's actually something that can be connected to the end of the wand because all Dyson machines are in three in one format. Are we ready? I'll move this over a bit to the way. Okay. Yeah? Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And if you can tackle five meters of thick ribbon, yeah. it's not going to have a hassle with anyone's hair, unless you're Rapunzel, maybe. Um, actually, no, Rapunzel, we got her covered as well. <laughs> um, amazing. Um, so we're so excited to really have taken you through some of the technology zones, but I know this is your favorite part, Neil. Come into my part. <laughs> Let's head into the, the healthy space. Good wait, there's more. Oh, thank you. I actually wish, I wish this was my apartment, but that view over the Opera House there would be one of the most uh, prestigious apartments in, in Sydney, I think. Um, but this, I love this space because this is where everything starts to feel real. I mean, obviously, you know, we, we've heard George talk through all this amazing technology, um, but it's when you start to apply it in the home that it all starts to feel real because you can put it into context. Um, you know, I've been a friend of the Dyson brand now for quite some time, and I, I have to admit, I have to fess up that given what I do for a living, or have done for a living for most of my career, I deal in aesthetics. I deal in things that look good. And it was the good looks of the Dyson products that originally drew me towards them, because I have always thought, and I still do to this day, think that they look incredible. They're such distinctive um, products that they're unlike anything else. And I just love the sort of simplicity of them. They, they're products that tell it like it is. There's nothing hidden. Very true. But it was only once I started using Dyson and introducing Dyson into my own life and my own home that I realized that the technology and the functionality of those products was second to none. Not just well, a pretty face. Sorry? Yeah. It wasn't Not just a pretty just face. Not just a pretty face, yeah. exactly. Mm. That's a very good way of putting it. Um, you know, they are the perfect fusion of, of good looks and technology. Um, I live in the country now. I used to live in, in, the, in the city, but now I live in the country. Um, and I also live in a house with four dogs. And <laughs> rather stupidly, perhaps, for someone who has four dogs, I have white floorboards throughout my house, uh, white painted floorboards, and I have a lot of furniture that looks pretty similar to this, in this kind of color palette. So we do kind of make life difficult for ourselves, but with a little bit of help from Dyson, we seem to have everything covered. Um, what George and I are going to do in this section, in this space, is talk to 
five or six of the most common pollutants, for want of a better word, in the home um, through this uh, technology that I have here on the iPad. We're going to identify them first and then talk about how Dyson has the capability to eradicate them, basically, and deal with them. Kicking off with... Pollen. And you can see, can you see the pollen spores there? Dancing mm -hmm. on the screen. Mm -hmm. I mean, pollen, yeah, pollen's an interesting one because I, I guess like most people, I, I know what pollen is kind of vaguely, but I think of pollen as being something that is just in the air. I forget that pollen actually lands mm -hmm. and surfaces are covered in pollen too. Um, I don't have a problem personally with hay fever. I'm very fortunate in that regard. Um, but my partner suffers terribly from hay fever, and we live in the country. So I live in a house where we are surrounded by trees, by paddocks, by grasses, by plant life everywhere. Pollen is a problem for us. Um, and also we, we fill our home with vases full of, of flowers and foliage and leaves all through the year. And I don't think I ever took on board that that pollen we thought that sort of if we kept the windows shut, that pollen was outside, but no, it's not, is it? It's inside as well. You're absolutely right. I think what the challenge is with pollen, it's actually invisible to the yeah. eye. And like you said, it does coat a lot of our surfaces. And again, it's really thrilling to be able to see what you're picking up, but often, you know, you don't know exactly what it is and how effectively you removed no. it from your surface. So what we love about Dyson Cord Free Vacuum Cleaners is just as much innovation and thought that goes into the motor technology and the cyclone separation, same thing goes for our, our tools and attachments. They really help detail the whole home. So the tool I'm going to showcase here is our combination tool. Um, this is really almost like a, an owner favorite because it serves two purposes. It has an open large channel that you can remove larger debris. So let's say in this context, you're removing some of the leaves that have fallen off the planted plants, but then we can slide the dusting brush forward to then methodically dust while being delicate to our services, by removing the pollen that is actually coming from these plants. You know, when we're sitting down and it's causing those respiratory reactions or hay fever, um, this tool is gonna help remove it. And what I'd love to share with you, we reset the particle count, okay, before we um, did this demonstration. And just through those couple of swipes, mm. I've moved, uh, removed over 16,000 microns that are the size of well, that are the size of ten microns. I mean, sixteen thousand of them, which we know are allergens and pollen. So again, we've been vacuuming this all day, and yeah. no matter as we move through, this is still, is, um, you know, coating our surfaces with pollen. So it's exciting because this is the new Cleveland moment for Dyson, right? Before it used to be really exciting to see all the dust and debris, but this is going to now prove. Mm exactly what I'm picking up and reassuring me that the people in my home are gonna actually benefit from a cleaner, healthier home environment. So this tool is incredible to help remove that as well. But using that, George, in combination with this as well, with the air purifier. Most definitely. And for pollen in particular. You know, you mentioned that the pollen goes up in the air yeah. and it settles. It actually can stay in the air for up to 30 minutes or up to an hour. So by combining purification technology, and in particular Dyson's advanced purifiers, and using a cord-free Dyson vacuum cleaner is the best chance at creating the cleanest, healthier home environment. So thank you so much for bringing that up because mm. it's important. Um, oh, I know we've got a bit of a mess here this time. Well, <laughs> you've also mentioned the clean bin. Now, I mean, that is obviously such an important part of, of Dyson technology. And I was astounded when I first started chatting with you that in the early days of Dyson, I mean, the, the word was that no one was ever going to buy them because there was a clean bin. Mm. Nobody would want to see what was being picked up. And I find that extraordinary because what I love about these products is the fact that I can see everything. I mean, it's, it's almost like that, that um, video that we saw earlier with the, with the new OmniGlide. I, mm. I said afterwards that's a very satisfying video because you can just see all that stuff being cleaned up. I love cleaning with Dyson and seeing what I'm picking up. It's like you can see, you can see the fruits of your labors, if you like. People were um, horrified, but in a good way. <laughs> horrified in a good way is exactly the way to put it. Exactly. I mean, it's sort of confronting, but, mm. but it's satisfying to see how much you are picking up off the floor. 
So, I mean, to me, that is an absolute added benefit of any Dyson vacuum. Yeah. But can we just talk very briefly to George about dog short dog hairs? Because mm -hmm. I've, I've got four dogs, but fortunately they've all got short hair. Mm -hmm. um, three Weimaranas and an Italian Greyhound. Mm -hmm. um, two breeds that are not supposed to shed hair, but they do. Um, they leave very small sort of micro hairs everywhere. Uh, the Dyson B15 can completely tackle long yeah. hair, short hair. Um, any type of debris, whether it's an allergen, pollen, it's perfect for the upholstered surfaces. Um, I'm going to show you just how effective it is uh, removing, I guess, embedded allergens and the pet hair on the lounge. But what I'd like to, I guess, come back to slightly is really that whole clip in mode. Yeah. I think what frustrates us most at, at Dyson is that we invest so much in creating better technology just for someone to come along and actually copy that technology so we always have to reinvent and be first to bring that to the market so as exciting as it is to see the dirt now it's not good enough for us at Dyson we want owners to know that their home has been cleaned completely and provide that scientific proof and that's why I always like to refer as this LCD screen as that new clear bin moment mm. um, so check this out this tool is also really functional because it has a self-adjusting base plate so if you have beautiful furniture throughout your home different bends and curves you just activate the trigger you can do it in any different direction but it means that i'm maintaining contact with the surface no matter what angle i'm at so it's really ergonomic it's easy to clean and it's super fast than ever before to be able to remove i guess crime scene of hair that gets to be left when our um, <laughs> beloved pets are sitting on our upholstered surfaces. Yeah, they and you can be see on in the first place, but they always do. <laughs> they always do. They sneak in um, and you can see absolutely no care caught on this brush bar. So Dyson engineered tools are incredible at detailing your whole home, not just your floors. But let's move across here to, um, well, I guess I couldn't really call it a pollutant, could I? But salt and sugar. Particles, small particles. You can see the particles there. These huge sugar particles dancing there on the screen, which I guess are part of life, aren't they? Particularly in the kitchen. Yeah, I don't know necessarily if they're contributing to an unhealthy home, but I know consuming it is definitely unhealthy. Um, but with that said, it's more realistic in terms of the condiments that we spill in the morning, representative of food scraps, and really those everyday quick cleans that we need to achieve. So before I vacuum that up using our combination tool again, you know, how do these floors look to you? Pretty clean. Pretty clean, right? Mm -hmm. But again, this is the benefit of the Dyson laser because we'd often just leave these spaces after before. And I know in my household, you know, there's a lot of crumbs, not from me, but from my partner's side, there's always a whole bunch of crumbs there. But look at that. This just helps you get a precise clean exactly where you've missed it. And then literally with the pivot of the cleaner head, I'm revealing that dirt dust in the green. It's absolutely incredible. So the I mean, days are long gone when we used to put the dining table, uh, dining chairs up on the table. Totally, so yeah, and because of how easy it is to engineer and pivot, I can just quickly go down there, vacuum up nice and quickly. Again, you know, normally in my home, the problem is we wouldn't move it, but like I can't knowingly leave that there. So I'm going to move this out of the way and make sure that I get every single little bit of debris to make sure and whoever sits at the dining table is not going to drag me because my floor's good in there, good on there. And with that said, it's also perfect for those low um, crevices in furniture. So this is generally where the dust bunnies tend to hide. So if we literally turn the laser on, I know we all have a spot like this in our home that we find quite difficult to clean. Oh, yeah. The laser reveals that. Again, you know, it's almost that part where you're like driving across it and then it actually illuminates what's under there and it actually makes you want to go under and clean it, which is incredible. Cool. Very so with cool. that said, the combination tool just Oops. here, it's perfect for those condiment areas as well. This is where the really open gullet's going to be great. Vacuum up quickly and then near that fine surface. Remove the dust and allergens. And it's so accurate that when you're picking up the sugar, only the bar graph that says up to 500 microns in size is raising. So it's super well calibrated, which is exciting. Amazing. George, next seeing as we, well, <laughs> seeing as we've got such a messy floor, do you want to talk about OmniGlide? <gasps> what about one more tool here, just with V15? Oh, you want to do that one I first? I think so. So this is microscopic dust. 
And if I can angle that towards all of you, this is the one I always find tricky to find. Uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Ah, you can see the microscopic dust there. Thing? Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So th I mean, this, yeah, you, you talk first, and then I'll um, I'll chip in on this one. No, definitely. I think actually I was going to take a bit of inspiration from you mentioned about our artworks on the wall, and you know it's very yeah. difficult to sort of really detail them properly. Um, and I know you shared a story about. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, look, I think that more, more and more of us um, have got art in our homes now. I mean, we're, we're displaying art sort of gallery style. A lot of us have got much more art than this, you know, maybe three, four times this. And I know that I certainly, in my home, I have an arrangement very similar to what we're seeing here, because more and more of us are collecting ceramics and glassware and vases and all these things. Um, and also we're filling our homes with plants, not unlike the Strelitzia that's in the corner. Um, and all those things are dust collectors. And I'm old enough to remember the days when you would pick up a good old feather duster to dust those things that are very delicate, the things that you don't want to, to dislodge or move. But of course, what the net result of that is that you just send the dust up into the air in a big cloud and it all comes and settles back down on the same surfaces. So this attachment is absolutely brilliant for, for dealing with those sort of areas where you do have to go gently. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's specifically great because they are soft and delicate bristles and they're actually splayed out at an angle with a felt strip. So it's protecting those delicate surfaces, but also letting you almost get into all the nooks and crannies in your artwork, on your skirtings, in your architraves, you know, even detailing the smallest of areas, but maintaining a complete contact with that. Can also be the glass. You mentioned it. Our plants also, yeah. you know, get a lot of dust. But this tool is so delicate that you know, people laugh a little bit when I do this at home. They catch me on my balcony, but it's so delicate. It's not going to, you know, be harmful to any of your plants, but it's helping remove a lot of the, the, that microscopic um, dust, which is the thing that causes like rhinitis and those sneezes. Mm. Um, so. I just Gone wish I, 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 wish I had, that, I wish <laughs> I'd had this in my old house in, in Surrey Hills years ago because in that particular house we had t a total of 127 artworks on wow. the wall. And I know that because I had to count them once for an article I was writing. I don't have that, that many now on the walls in our, in our home down south because they wouldn't all fit. But yeah, that, that was fun with the feather duster and I wish I'd had, um, had one of those to deal with that huge gallery. I'm so glad you brought okay. that up because you know you can even attach any of those tools to the end of the wand so it's completely versatile yeah. for after top cleaning and with 60 minutes of runtime, I feel like you would have got through all 127 for oh, sure no, I would. in an hour. I mean, that was across <laughs> three levels, but yeah, there were 100. Amazing. So I guess one thing to note of this product, which is the Dyson Omni Glide, we want to bring it to life here for you in this setting because we find this is really where this machine is going to shine. Generally in your open plan, in hard floor living areas, when we're having meals, where we're preparing meals, in our washrooms, in our bathrooms, and particularly those hard floor areas. So the genius of this omnidirectional cleaner head, which we mentioned before, is it actually pivots and spins in any complete direction. But what it does now is actually pick up dirt and debris in the forward pass. And now also the backwards pass. So you're cleaning your floors quicker than ever. And that's large debris, fine dust. And also because of its maneuverability, we now can go sideways, so it's a completely new way that you've never been able to clean before. And also, it glides perfectly across furniture to really get those annoying areas where you usually have to get a, an accessory out to detail it. Um, and of course, you might be wondering, well, this is a quite a narrow cleaner head. We love that because think of the spaces in your washroom or your bathroom and that kind of narrow gap between the tub and the toilet. You know, there's not, this cleaner can just quickly put it to the side, get between those areas. But if you have a larger open plan space, it's literally driving it across and it almost hovers across the floor to really give that barefoot clean. So look at me getting obsessive detailing the whole floor, but we'll put some more debris down for you guys to experience. No, I have missed it, haven't I? Yeah. Thank you. I did though. <laughs> um, and with that said, this is uh, Dyson's first inline design where you can lie it completely flat so we can get under the most narrow bits of furniture. And the other thing I love about this product is 
you know, we have really incredible edge to edge cleaning at Dyson, but now I just run along my skirting boards this way. It makes it super easy to get around those surfaces. And with that said, this maintains the ring one functionality as well. There are tools and accessories that can be touched at the end of the wand for really quick and easy up top cleaning and of course directly to the inlet of the unit. So this we see working perfectly with having a full home deep cleaning solution that you're gonna go around and remove every bit of allergens from your home, but there's those really quick top ups of high frequency, high floor cleaning, the only guide is gonna be the hero of the day to really get those um, large spring find us from those areas clean perfectly and quickly. So if people have kids and there's something wet on the floor and they use that, which I'm assuming is not a, a wet and dry head, how easy right. is it to clean the head and, and dry it. I'm so glad you brought that up because if we do, we obviously would never recommend vacuuming up in a large patch of wet areas, but it tends to happen in those kitchen spaces. Droplets come when we wash our hands in our dishes, and this velvet soft roller is actually made out of a lifetime washable material. So it can be washed and maintained, but we've made it even easier. We push this red tab here, and the brush bar slide completely out. So these can be removed individually remove any obstructions that may be around the brush bar, but also give them a complete wash or wipe them down with an alcohol wipe, dry them completely and pop that back in there. Cause you're right, you know, the kids tend to leave a lot of greasy items on the floor um, and a lot of sort of- And they might not ask the parents food. to just, oh, I'll grab the Dyson and then suddenly it's like, oh, you know. Absolutely. You, and the, the parents come and find it later. But the good thing is they're built to last, so we make sure the hygienic bin emptying empties through and the cleaner heads can be completely maintained. But that was a great question. Thank you, Alex. Built to last. That, that's a very nice segue into a point that I wanted to make before we move into the bedroom. I mean, quite apart from these products' deep cleaning um, capabilities, I, I feel that these, these Dyson products play very much into a sort of a greater emphasis on functionality that we're all experiencing at the moment. I mean, certainly as, as we've touched on already today, we're all spending more time in our homes than ever before. Um, but there are certain things that I think have been, that, that started pre-COVID, pre-pandemic, but certainly have been accelerated by the pandemic. And that is the sort of emphasis on the functionality of the home and the spaces that we all live in. And I think I used the phrase at, uh, right at the beginning that our homes are having to work harder for us than they ever have before. Um, we're thinking much more about the use of our spaces. I mean, this is something that I see on the block, particularly this season that we're judging at the moment, the contestants really thinking about the rooms that they're creating and what the end use of those rooms is going to be, whether they're going to be home offices, multifunctional spaces, home theatres, even potentially spaces that can be rented out as Airbnb or, or whatever. But we're giving much more thought to the way our houses, houses flow and how we use them. But at the same time, we're giving more thought to the products that we're buying for our homes. You know, we all know that since the pandemic, we've all been spending far more money on our homes than ever before. But I think we're also giving far more thought to the way we're spending that money. And we're looking at the what, what we're gonna get from those products and the longevity and the sustainability of those products. I mean, I, I certainly can sort of uh, talk to furniture buying. People, you know, when they're buying furniture now, there's a growing movement towards wanting to know where that furniture is made, how it's made, and what it's made from. And I think the same thing flows through to devices and appliances like the, the Dyson products. These are built to last. Definitely. These are built for longevity. There is a sustainability that is inbuilt with them. Definitely. You know, we're not just passionate about solving the problems inside the technology. As a company, we're passionate about lean engineering, right? Yeah. And making sure we're, you know, being progressive and really contributing to sustainability mm. at, at Dyson as a whole. So it's an incredible point to bring up because Dyson machines are an investment in your home. Um, and this is something that, again, is going to help create those cleaner, healthier yeah. home environments. But across but the whole spectrum, buying well has yes. become a very important thing. They're, they're very key decisions that we're all making. So I think this, it's the perfect timing, if you like. I mean, the, these values have always been important to yes. Dyson, but I feel that at just at this precise moment, there's a greater understanding and a greater sort of value being placed on, on this, I'd on that kind that. of integrity. Absolutely. So let's move into the bedroom. Absolutely. While you get that one prepared, yeah. I'd love to just call your attention to one particular machine that's making it appearance. 
and just to show you, sorry Neil, we'll come over no, to the down. So this is a B12, we've got the B12 here just to show you. Um, again, this is our compact but no compromise on power and intelligence. So this with B12 to tail slim, we're getting of course our laser dust protection, our acoustic dust sensing, and our, and our LCD screen for that scientific proof of a deep clean, but in a 2.2 kilogram format, so it's perfect for those compact homes. Now obviously it's a much smaller bin than V15, so it's really about making the right decision based on your home environment, okay? If someone's living in a small studio apartment, but they want the latest and greatest technology and a really powerful machine, this is gonna be perfect for them, okay? And what's great, of course, it has that power button, so it's quick and easy to switch between hands without interrupting the thing. So I'm gonna have that for you guys to experience as well, but I would have been remiss to miss this one. No, no, well that, so that's, thank you. I mean, more and more of us are living in small spaces now too. Definitely. Uh, sort of downsizing to apartments and studios, so that's, that's very relevant. It's just so great that developing machines specific to the needs of our owners and our living conditions and the new model in the world. So, back to the human hair. <laughs> there we go. Human hair magnified, goodness knows goodness knows how many times. <laughs> now this isn't necessarily invisible, but what this represents is obviously different types of particles throughout the home. Um, we know that, I know in my household, you know, I have flatmates that will do almost their beauty routine in the washroom, in the bathroom, and um, when kind of blow drying the hair, all of those flyaways end up getting glued into the corner of the floor, and I have this really nice sort of gray tiled floor that actually hides a lot of the hair anyway um but what's great a lot of my housemates just literally click their hair screw tool on at the end of the tube like we did in that demonstration and just quickly vacuum up any of the hair that's on the basin um that's actually fallen into the bathtub or onto the floors and on the mats and this just lets them quickly and easily remove the pet hair before i come on in and go clean up <laughs> um, so it makes it quick and easy without that maintenance um, but again we showed how great it is on pet hair and moving polstered surfaces um, I know that uh, you know this is a great tool to also use on your mattress um, so Neil's about to show you why it's important we do that <laughs> saving the worst for last uh, I just saw it scurrying across the, the dust might yeah I think too dust mites um, where are they if you come more to this way, stand there and eject it from my end. I think you'll see him floating. Stop, where's, where's, my, where's my dust mic? I'll show the ladies over this way. There it is. Oh, there, 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 there it is. Wait, is it in this vicinity? Just right at you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, but with that said, you know, we mentioned it in our presentation earlier. Dust mites are really one of those um, considered an allergen and because of all their droppings and because of those nasty little claws that we just saw in that 3D animation, they embed themselves quite deeply into our polstered surfaces. So we'd recommend either using the Dyson mattress tool um, or the hair screw tool. The reason why we have two different applications is we're conscious of cross-contamination. Some people who are vacuuming their pet beds aren't necessarily gonna wanna vacuum their mattress with this tool. So we often, we offer a, a, a mattress tool that helps um, create a really great seal to vacuum um, up all the dust mites and their droppings from our upholstered surfaces. But I tend to use the hair screw tool at home. And with that, the best practice is take your sheets off, wash them as per your normal bed sheet cycle, um, but at that time, kick the machine into a boost mode, attach on either your mattress tool or your hair screw tool, and literally vacuum out all those dust mites. If you have a bed topper, vacuum the bed topper first and then the mattress, and you'll actually find um, there's generally a really almost fine powder of dead skin cells in the machine. Um, and the beauty of it is, you just stop vacuuming once the bar stop growing. Um, so depending on how solid your mattress is, you might be going <laughs> for a while, um, but at least you know once it stops that you've removed as many of that as possible. And George, what's the best tool to use for a bed where the dogs actually sleep on the bed or in the bed? I was asking no, for a friend. Actually, <laughs> asking for a friend. Yeah. I would say the hair screw tool, especially <laughs> a lot of the time they like to sit on the end of the bed, right, and yeah. kind of be there. This is perfect. But obviously it's got really powerful suction there. But if you just hold an area of the loose surface, you can vacuum your ottomans and throws and things. So you're absolutely right on top of the bed. This is the one I'd be using for sure. 
But somebody asked, um, I think previously today, how often you should vacuum the mattress. And I mean, yes. really, it's as simple as basically how often you change your sheets. That's when you do it. Yeah, that's when we encourage Every time. to do it. Yeah. And look, there really isn't an excuse anymore because it's cord free, it's got enough power, you know, it's almost just grab it off the wall. Even if you don't want to sit in a handheld mode, put the tube on it. I mean, you're almost standing from here and you're actually getting more reach to get across to the other side of the bed too. So it's completely modular and you can convert it to make it work for you and however your home is. And that's what we love about Dyson products. And with that said, dust my allergens, right? They embed into our furnishings, but you know, have you ever noticed when you've got a lamp on at night and you move your duvet and you almost see like all those allergens, microscopic dust flying in the air? This is why it's super important to combine that with the purifying product inside your home. Um, it's really all about purifying the air in rooms and not just having one purifier for a whole home. So we'd always recommend almost one in the bedroom, one in the living room to help capture mm. all those airborne particles that stay up there for 30 minutes. Um, and they tend to enter the home every single day. This product is Dyson's latest all year round solution, which is a hot, have a Dyson Purifier Hot Plus Cool, so it's a fan and a heater, but it now has an advanced filter to not only capture um, particle matter and gases and odors, but this is the first product to be able to destroy formaldehyde. And you know, it comes back to your point, Neil, about choosing the right furniture. Yeah. A lot of formaldehyde is actually an odorless gas that off gases in your home for years. Um, and it tends to be emitted from new furnishings and DIY projects and flat packs and paints and glues and a lot of things we do to freshen up our homes. Yeah. And we've done so much more of that during you know, lockdown. Um, we're just exposing ourselves to even more of a cocktail of pollutants. Yeah. So this is it's like It's like pollen, isn't it? Because we can't see it, we forget it's there. But totally. it's actually very damaging and harmful to us. Absolutely. And again, that's why Dyson's introduced our latest purifier that has the capability to destroy formaldehyde while capturing all those other nasty particles from yeah. the air. Well, um, I guess I've shared all I can share with you at this moment. So we're just going to mess up this space for you a bit later on as well. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Thank you, George. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I know, I know you say that you can't describe these products as well as the guys on the video can, but I dispute that. I think you do an amazing job. So fun. thank you. <laughs> Any questions for George before we finish on this on this final section? Very complicated. Amazing. Oh my God, it's so much. <laughs> so good. Really bad. Does anyone want to run home and vacuum their mattress? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sleep well tonight, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Neil, thank you so much for, I guess, guiding us through each and every one of the stations and kind of, uh, you know, sharing your insights. They're really um, incredible to hear from someone with, you know, your expertise. You know, I can talk the tech, but really um, the experience and, you know, the insights you shared are, are invaluable. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. And thank you guys for coming. Thank you very much for giving us your time. And before you run off, do try the technology, experiment with the technology and, uh, and have a play with the um, augmented reality on the iPads as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Enjoy. We're going to mess up the joke for you now. So Thank have you. fun exploring and I'll be floating around to answer any questions you may have. Um, one on one.